too. Hey, we're back and a lot fatter. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've expanded our knowledge. And our size. And our size. Um, I, I'm Sean. I'm Aubrey. And it's been about a year since this uh, is fucking y crazy. Over a year, I think. Yeah, we need to do this more often. Anyway, you're watching Booville TV. TV. Uh, as we've already stated, you clearly, we're here, I think, I is where we are. I know where we are. Okay, I didn't, I just, I knew we were around the, yeah, so we're fat, and um, but that's okay, because we're cool with ourselves, and as you can tell by my voice, something is amiss. What possibly could be amiss? Well, we just recently uh, returned back from, uh, you probably can't see this, but Dragon Con. Yes, the Southeast's answer to fuck you Comic Con. Um, Dragon Con uh, celebrated its 30th anniversary this year. I sound like a, I sound like Peter Brady when my nuts are dropping. <laughs> um, but Dragon Con celebrated, yes, 30 years, 1987 to 19... 1916? No. 2016. Uh, what started off as a little podunk idea of having a multi-genre convention turned into... Yep. And for those of you who have never gone to Dragon Con, it, you don't really... You don't really go to Dragon Con. You no. experience. And boy, is it an experience indeed. Yeah. Um... So this whole episode, I know you're going to go, wait a minute, don't they do normally do like horror movie reviews? Well, there's a reason that those of us that are horror buffs are going to review this, and this is going to be um, a second part of this video, um, which I was, both of us were extremely excited for. Uh, it was the 25th anniversary of Vampire the Masquerade, and there was a panel that was done, and we'll, we'll get... We'll get to that later. That was it. Was an amazing panel. I kind of didn't want to go because for various reasons. And I reasons. made him because I'm a horrible person, but he liked it. Yeah, no, it, we'll get back to that. But so yes, this is the Dragon Con episode, sort of our welcome back to Booville. Uh, it's uh, we apologize. It's something that we've been lacking in because of you know life and yeah. uh, stupid things. But we'll talk about firstly the drive down. Up. Up. Whatever. Um, and we'll skip to the, the good bits. Where we are, it's about a five hour, five and a half hour drive. Yeah. And five and five hours and 15 minutes of that was fine. And it was amazing. And now over to Aubrey until, you know, getting oh. our wonderful... Uh -huh. We did get a host hotel this past year, so we yes. wound up staying at the uh, Mary, uh, the Atlanta Marriott Marquis. The Marquis. The Marquis. Um, amazing hotel, but I, she tells the story so much better. Okay, so, so um, we're about a block, a block and a half away from pulling into the main circular part uh, of the hotel where you, you know, unload your stuff. Blah, blah, Which blah, blah, one blah. block equals about, you know, an hour and a quarter. Yeah. Worth of real time. Well, because it's Atlanta. We uh, that particular road was. Um, I think was it was it just a one way two lane road? Oh yeah. Like most of downtown Atlanta, we were in the left hand lane. We needed to get right. We're only a block and a half away from the hotel, and apparently everybody else in Atlanta also needed to be in the right lane. Well, being that there was a football game going on. You can imagine even more fucking people. 
than before. You know we're here, right? Yeah, I know. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm about that. Yeah, I can definitely. I'm just building to the Atlanta fuck youery of what you're about to say. I know where the camera is. Which reminds me, keep in mind talking. I gotta get it more wine anyway, so. I know where the camera is. I'm not stupid, thanks. Um, <laughs> so, we're trying to get right. And what the? Oh, there's fuckery going on in the background. I'm sorry. Um. Anyway, we have the turn signal on because you know we're actually those people that actually use the turn signal. What a fucking surprise! Because most people don't do that, apparently. Um, Especially in Atlanta. Yeah, we're trying to get over. Nobody's letting us over. Anytime we even start to try to. Stick the nose of the vehicle in the next lane. The people in that lane are just easing up just enough, so we cannot get over whatsoever. And we hate traffic, by the way. We're we're we, we mm, road so, rage poster children. So we're sitting there for about twenty minutes trying to get over. Just stopped in the middle of the road. There's people behind us getting mad because we're stopped in the middle of the road trying to get over. <coughs> so I've had about damn enough. I actually get out of the vehicle, um, and I stay, and then this, this asshole is in this other lane, was just ease, starting, like everybody else, starting to ease up just enough to where we couldn't get over. So I get out of the car. I stand, because we're all at a fucking stop right now, because traffic is stupid anyways. I stand in front of his vehicle, and I hold my hand out, and I actually have to literally wave our vehicle over in front of him just so we can get in the right goddamn lane to drive a block to turn into the fucking hotel. We were already done at this point. Oh, and when we get to the hotel, we were supposed to have valet parking. Now, this is a Thursday. Dragon Con is Labor Day weekend and the the Monday of Labor Day. So, we decided this year we would get there on Thursday because nothing really goes on on Thursdays. So, fuck... Apparently, this year, Thursday is the new Friday. Yep. So, by the time we got there, and this was only about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, the valet, which is, we had, just, okay, when you park at a host hotel or anywhere in Dragon Con, you can do one of two things. You can pay an exorbitant amount of money to park at that location for the stay, or you can park way the fuck at the airport and take the MARTA all the way back down then go all the way walk all the way back to here fuck that shit because as my darling Aubrey has already told you we're fat and lazy and lazy yep we don't want to do that for yep. a goddamn convention so we had already set aside money for the valet when we get finally to the circle they tell us oh guess what the parking garage is full but We've also expanded this year to the SunTrust building, so it's only a block up, and then you can park there. So we did that. Well, hold on. We first had to pull into the circle, meet uh, Megan, who you've seen on previous uh, reviews. Her and her friend, uh, Ash, unloaded our shit for us, uh, because the bellhop decided to just fuck off and go to somebody else, even yep. though they were supposed to come to us. So, at this point, both Aubrey and I were about goddamn done with Dragon Con for this year. Yep. We finally get in the room. She accosts fate with a barrage of verbal fuck youery, not directed at him. No, there was one directed at him. Oh, never again. Yeah. However, we wound up deciding to eat those words because... Yeah. So. We actually really, really liked the hotel and... Where they ended up having us park instead, even though it was a block away, it was about um, $50 cheaper. Yeah, $50 cheaper, and it was connected with a habit trail to our hotel, so that was good. Uh, we finally check into the hotel after a, a 30 minute bitch session and proceeded to, for the rest of the whole time we were there, have a blast. Yep. Uh, the Marriott Marquis. Marquis. Used Marquis, 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 Marquis used to have used to be the quiet hotel. 
not the fuck anymore. Nope. Uh, the moment we got there, it was already <coughs> from the bottom of people that had already checked in and were already partying. Yeah. Keeping in mind, the convention doesn't start till the next goddamn day. From what we've heard, uh, there are pictures from the night before on Wednesday hmm. where there was already a clusterfuck of people everywhere. So apparently Wednesday is the new Thursday. Thursday is the new Friday. And Thursday is the new Friday. So next year we have to go on Wednesday, which means that Tuesday will be the new Wednesday, which is the new... Yeah. So anyway, Dragon Con, it is a whirlwind of activity, um, which starts now. Uh, Dragon Con just ended, and the buzz and everything for Dragon Con 2017 is already happening. Um, on the Facebook groups, on the Dragon Con page itself. They're still trying to deal with the aftermath. Almost 80,000 people this year uh, between yeah. five host hotels and a bunch of overflow in downtown Atlanta becomes Nerd Central. Which is great. Which is wonderful. Love um, it. We take it over. It's one of the few times that I would actually walk and did. Story about that in a minute. Walk downtown Atlanta at like 2 o'clock in the morning. And not fear for your life. And not fear for your life. Um, so anyway, we had several costume changes planned. Uh, one of our costumes that were sort of an afterthought wound up being probably the biggest hit. Yeah. All because of the addition of a sign. Yep. And that was... Um, Witch and Warlock Suffragettes, and uh, I guess for males that would be... Suffrage. Suffrage, yeah, for Witch and Warlock Suffrage. So, you know, we made signs that say, votes for Witches Suffrage, and votes for Warlocks, and I had a little sash, and even though it was supposed to be a casual costume, it, it went over uh, a lot better than we thought it would. Yeah, People we were... loved it. Yeah, we were stopped every five seconds for pictures, and that was not expected. Not at all. Um... Uh, the convention itself, like I said, was such a whirlwind. Um, we met some really interesting people. Um, <laughs> That's for fucking sure. We'll get to that story in a minute. Well, the tame version of that story. Um, so anyway, one of the things is when you... And I forgot our badges, but whatever. Uh, whatever. Anyway, every year, your membership... Uh, it's one of the few conventions that you don't... You're not... You don't buy, you are a member instead of a patron. And that's kind of neat. Um, it's with Dragon Con. You purchase a membership. Mm -hmm. And the badges are distinct for each year, and ours are hanging up in the room. And, and apparently so are the host hotel room keys. Yes, which I also forgot to... I have mine. With you right now? No. Yeah, that's... Okay. It's in my wallet. Mine is too. Uh, but anyway, when you finally do check in, relax, hang out around, have several drinks, blah, blah, blah. Several. You move your, especially if you're me, you move. Yeah. You move onward to purchase, or well, to pick up your badge and your whatever. Um, and one of the interesting things about Dragon Con, and it's always fun to, after Dragon Con is way, way over, you go back and you look. Um because you don't really have time. There's a Dragon Con app that everyone can use um, that nine times out of ten you book way too many shits that are going on at the same time. But when you purchase your, or not purchase, but when you when you pick up your membership, um, there's a table outside where, here, where you receive these things. Um, this is the program book and that is the pocket program yeah that is the equivalent of the app in paper format which there are a lot of fucking pages you better have a goddamn smartphone because this is a pain in the ass yeah there are so many tracks um th that are put on by the fans uh there's a trek track there's a star wars track there's an alternative history track there's a puppeteering track there's a horror track there's a Kids track. Uh, kids track, a Flemish underwater basket weaving 14th century track. Anything you can think of is there. But again, I would suggest uh, f the, the the smartphone app. So, 
Anyway, we move on. We, several different costumes we did. We're not going to get into that. I mean, we did the Witch's Suffrage. We did the 1966 Batman Rose Gallery. Uh, we did something for the Mechanical Mar Masquerade, which Mechanical is a steampunk Mar thing. Sure. Shut up. It's a Mechanical Masquerade ball thing that happens. Uh, Ten Forward party that happens. Klingon. Star Trek. Yeah, Klingon stuff. We did a lot of shit. And it would just so happen that... Amongst all of the fun, we meet someone who, well, actually, we met this person the night before. Saturday night at the 10, well, after. after the 10 forward party. And we kind of clicked, and this was whatever, and we made plans to hang out the next night at the Mechanical Masquerade. We did, um, fell in love with this person, shared some very, very special moments with this person, uh, and of course, you know, the next day the goddamn con was over. Now, we were staying a day extra this individual was not and it makes us very very sad because um they were very uh, very special to us yeah um and um we love dims and they know who they are so yes. we love you um now one of the things about dragon con is that every five seconds if you have a really neat costume or even just a weird one you'll be stopped it doesn't matter what you are. Even if you think it's really bad and you just put it together with some hot glue and felt at your house. Somebody somewhere will get it and they will love it and they will take your picture. One of the interesting things to collect at Dragon Con is all of the business cards that people give you that you meet. Um, this one is for Vok Nation. They took our picture. This one is for Jack P. Krolak who took our picture. This is for pixelated imagey, uh, images, photography. They took our picture. <coughs> <coughs> and yes, I'm sick, and we'll get into the Dragon Con thing about that. Met a really cool uh, other gothic guy. Struck up a really cool conversation when we were in casual, just normal gothic clothes. Latex Records and uh, VenusAeon.com. His girlfriend who does uh, some, and I looked at some of her pictures, really, really, really neat um, photography. And that's Hada Pixie. And you look her up at hadapixie.com. Just tons and tons of things. The dealer's room, we only got to the, the <laughs> last morning of the convention because part of which is our... our, our yes, um, the dealer's room... Was, uh, Rooms closes um, at 5 p.m. on Monday. By the time we got there, it was 4 p.m. on Monday. Yeah. The only time we went. So we had just enough time to check out two of the three floors that were the dealer's room. Which were kind of standard fare from last year. Mm -hmm. And we I only picked up like two things, like a Hydra medallion and a Hydra pin. And we got some really cool fans. And, yeah, really cool fans, which, whatever. Um, for those of you, and I guess this is more of the second part of this, until we get into the panel that we went to, but, which is where the horror thing comes in. How to Dragon Con. Mm. Ah. If you plan on going to Dragon Con, I would suggest planning now. Yep. Um, almost a year in advance. Yep. Because it is not your typical convention. Nope. Um, make sure that you set aside money for room food. Um, make sure that you set aside money for hand sanitizer. Parking. Parking. Um, extra food that you don't expend. Uh, you don't expect spending in the food court. Yeah. Um, money for swag and presents and things like that and money for booze that you didn't bring with you um, bring booze with you bring booze with you but if you don't and even if you do you'll run out trust me um oh, we have to talk about dragon con tv um <sighs> suggestions for them like if you've never been to dragon con before what would you if you've never ever been to Dragon Things that Con, they need to know to plan. Ooh, um, so that they're not what the fuck? and just left out and I didn't think to 
you're gonna want to know where things are. Um, your first year will fuck you. You're up. gonna if you don't stay, even if you do stay at host hotel, your pool, you might get lost if you're not familiar with downtown Atlanta. Yeah. So it's good to have some kind of GPS thing of some sort or an actual map that works too, because while most of the hotels and they have that on the Dragon Con app too. Yeah, while most it doesn't of, work, but while most of the hotels and events are interconnected through either habit trails or whatever. Um, there are some things that you actually will have to go outside for, mm. namely the dealer's room, mm. unless you're staying in the West End. And even... Yeah. Be prepared if you want to walk and you're not staying in a host hotel. You're gonna walk. You're gonna fucking walk. A lot. Uphill. Mostly uphill. In the heat. Yeah. So be prepared to bring lots of water. Mmm. Yes, water is... Okay. My beloved Aubrey is not a big fan of the whole comic book thing or any of that. But the, the catchphrase of this year was Hail Hydrate. Because yes. I'm a fat dude. I'm a fat bitch. If you don't hydrate and you're wearing costumes, especially Imperial Klingon with latex on your head and you're sweating... When you sweat more liquid than you're intaking... You will die. You will die. And you will spend your convention in the hospital, which is not really... Or dead. Or dead. Um, which is probably cheaper than the hospital. Because well, yeah. you've already spent, you know, thousands of dollars on Dragon Con. But, pl seriously, with all of the alcohol that I consume, with all the alcohol that most people consume there, honestly, please hydrate. Please drink water, juice, soda, tea, something. Preferably water, soda, or sorry, water, tea, and juice of some kind. Um, because you, you you really don't realize how much you sweat there. Dragon Con, speaking of sweating, Dragon Con is also weird, and it's one of the only conventions where there's really not the con funk that goes on. Yeah. People actually learn how to bathe there, Some and they actually bathe. Some of them don't, and probably because that's not a big weeaboo convention. No. And we didn't really go into the gaming Well, no, because... Eh. Um, but yeah, drink, 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 drink lots of water in, in, in amongst your alcoholic beverages. Yes. Um, also, for those of you that are single, and for those of you that are a couple... And something you might not have thought about before, bring personal hygiene items. And what do I mean by personal hygiene? Condoms. Hyg bring condoms. But do not, please do not go to this con specifically expecting to have sex with no, somebody. No, 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 no. That's you probably will, you, but... You might, if you are looking for it, you might not get it because that's not what this con. Even though it's a huge, it's a very big party con. Yeah. It, it, don't expect it to happen. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Be prepared. Bring them, just in case. But go for other reasons than just sex. Yeah, this is not. If you. If you want sex, go to go like find a hooker or something because you'll be spending just about as much money. Well, I kind of would agree with you on that, but at Dragon Con, fat people, if I wasn't with you, fat people like me could probably get laid if they really wanted to try. Yeah. And there's a lot of fucking going on at Dragon Con. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of other things going on at Dragon Con. So, but just be prepared. Just be, like the Boy Scouts. Always be prepared. Bring condoms, even if you don't think you might hook up with someone. Even if you're not going for that intention, bring condoms. If you're a couple that's open to different experiences, bring condoms. Because you never know what might just happen. No. Um, also, if you are staying at a host hotel or at any hotel, if your costume... <coughs> requires a lot of makeup or prosthetics think about bringing a little bit of extra money for the room tip 
because when you leave and you're exhausted and you're tired and you have a whole sink full of green makeup and latex that's stuck to the thing, remember that somebody has to clean that shit for you. So tip them well. So bring extra money, honestly, for tips. Bring extra money for tips for eating out. Bring tips for the room. Um, a lot of the host hotels, especially the Marriott, have complimentary items that you wouldn't really expect uh, other normal hotels to have. One of those is specifically is a corkscrew. Yep. I was completely without a corkscrew, so I called uh, the concierge desk <coughs> and asked them if they could have someone temporarily bring up a corkscrew so that I could open up, 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 open up a bottle of wine. They told me no. Not temporarily, no. No, and they, and it's on my key ring now, but they gave us one of the old school plastic, pull this way, stick it in this way, and use it that way. Uh, the tea corkscrews, which I thought was amazing. Uh, we, were com we were filled with fresh towels every day at the Marriott. Um, we're not going to tell you where exactly at the Marriott we stayed because that's a perfect, super secret squirrel suite that we had. Uh, myself, uh, Aubrey, and Professor Fate. If if you're going to Dragon Con, I would also strongly suggest bringing more clothing than you think you're going to wear. Yep. Uh, bring clothes for at least nine days, <laughs> <coughs> and that's outside of costumes. We're talking. Toilet, uh, underwear, socks, bras, that kind of thing. Well, that's underwear. But, uh, you know, think that. Yeah. Because you're going to sweat a lot. And if you're like us and you're considerate and you're especially like me where you sweat beauty. You're, you're going to want to shower like three times a day. Yeah, which is, yeah. So, remember that. Um, if you do intend on trying to go to Dragon Con, do not do what most people try to do. Last with most shit. conventions if you want to if you want to actually sleep in a hotel you uh, need to book it right away yes because even the far ass teeny fucking overflow hotels. overflow hotels will fill up very quickly the likelihood of you getting a host hotel unless you actually know how to get a host hotel is nil is very very slim so and the host hotels don't even go on sale till October. Some of, them. of this year. Sometimes they have secret sales. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you have to do it over the phone. Sometimes you have to do it on their website or in person. Sometimes you have to give somebody a blowjob. It's very complicated. So unless you are a Dragon Con host hotel professional, basically, Fate. you're gonna have, mm, probably not get one. So be prepared to not stay in a host hotel, but. Get it as soon as possible. Yeah, I... Going piggybacking on what Aubrey said, you would be surprised. You're thinking, what's five fucking hotels? Or I, oh, I could... No, you can't. No. Next year is probably going to be 80,000 plus. We were almost at 80,000 this year. 77, I think, is what they said. 77, 78. And... I promise you, if you plan on going to Dragon Con, when I say you need to start planning now, or start planning as soon as Dragon Con is over, which was several days ago, um, I'm not joking. We're also now going to move into one of my favorite aspects of, uh, of Dragon Con, and something that if you want your Dragon Con fix all year long, tune in to Dragon Con TV. Uh, this year they also had Dragon Con TV Land. Um, if you stay at one of the host hotels, and even now, <coughs> they have streaming memberships that even if you're not staying at a host hotel, you can pay $10 and actually have Dragon Con TV streamed to your hotel room. Um, and what is Dragon Con TV? It's a bunch of skits, it's a bunch of. You, adult swimmy type uh, commentary, live panels that you may not 
get to go to because there's so much going on. Wrestling. Wrestling, which is a big, huge thing. It's it not is. our thing, but... The parade. Yes, the costume parade. Costume contest. Costume contest. Um, and panels, really. Yeah. Panels that you might be interested in seeing, but I'm not going to wait in a three-hour fucking line. Skits and fan music videos to oh, yeah. parodies. You can even go online and go to YouTube and type in Dragon Con TV, and you can get all of that shit now. Yeah. Um, which, after we film this video, we're probably gonna uh, reminisce and watch some 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 DC TV. Dragon Con is not. I, I can't stress this. It's not just a convention. Imagine for a whole week if nerds of all genres took over. And you literally lived in a nerd city. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, even though that's not that, it's not that long of a con. I wish. There is something, I, I, there is something at Dragon Con going on every minute of every hour of every day throughout the whole convention. And it is like no other convention that you have ever been to. Um, unless you have anything more to say, we'll go ahead and move into the... Yes, um, since you are probably not going to get a host hotel, you're going to have to walk. And because we're fat and lazy, taxis. we like the taxi system. Yes, it's not that expensive. Taxis or Uber, which we didn't really do last year, but... Um, the hotel that we stayed at last year was, what, six blocks away? Yeah, which fuck that shit. From all of the main shit. And that was sick, the whole... 90% of that mm. was uphill walking. We took taxis whenever we could. Even though a lot of the overflow hotels do have free shuttles if you're a guest there. Yeah, but fuck that. I don't want to wait for that shit. $12, a taxi from the bumfuck inn to the Marriott. It's not that big of a deal. No, and you don't have to deal with all of the heat and the walking and, and the, the fucking cars and the traffic and the blah 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 so be prepared if you are fat and lazy like us or you just don't want to fucking walk save up some money for some taxis because they will save your life yes they will and also be prepared no matter how diligent you are with sanitation and this is a very 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 important topic because I am on the last legs of it con plague or con crud as it is often called no matter how diligent you are if you take vitamin C before, during, after you sanitize your hands before, during, after you wash your hands constantly throughout the convention you don't even share drinks with the person that you love and live with in the real world you wear nothing but a hazmat suit the whole convention you will contract Con plague. And if you don't, you're very lucky. I didn't last year, but I that's because I was already year. sick. I didn't last year uh, because I was very lucky, mm. unlike this year. Yeah, this year, both of us got it. I'm on my last legs of it. Um, when I tell you that con plague is no joke, it is no joke. When you get home and you have 102, 103 fevers, you cough so hard that you lose your voice because you know smoking is good for that too um, and you just want to die con plague is a real thing but you can protect yourself and, and, and honestly when you have 80,000 people touching the same lift rail or the same um, uh, elevator rails the same lift buttons and all of that Think about the merchandise that you pick up in the dealer's room. And then think about how many people have touched that prior to your purchase. When you think about making out with the person that you just met, think about all the other people they probably made out with that weekend. If you're walking through the Marriott and yeah. you're... Forcing, Breathing. Yeah, forcing your way through the giant sea of human bodies you might just catch something. Better yet, if you're walking through the Marriott and breathing, yeah, you're probably going to catch something. So be aware of that. 
it's a normal thing. It's all part of uh, the experience of Dragon Con. And well worth it. I mean... It is. I mean, if you take care of yourself the best that you can, uh, for those of us that have high blood pressure, use Coracidin, uh, your Sudafed, blah, blah, blah. For those of you that are more normal, a couple of days post-con suck. But it, it, it makes up for it. So this is our how-to section. Uh, the next section of this episode, it is a little. It's going to run a little bit longer than our normal because there's all just a shitload of stuff to talk about, yeah. and you haven't seen us in over a year. So, I'm excited. Aubrey's excited. We're all excited. Belfry is excited. Well, he, no, he's not really excited. He's, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's a belf. He belfs. He belfs. Um, so the next segment we're going to talk about. Is one of our favorite panels. So stay tuned here on Whoville TV. Welcome back to Whoville TV. Twenty-five <laughs> years ago, something <laughs> earth-shattering came out, and gaming has never been the same. Mm -hmm. And when I say gaming, I do mean tabletop and LARPing, mm -hmm. not video. Well, video games, but that was later. But Way we're later. not talking about that. We are talking about Vampire the Masquerade. And yes, this, this is my original book from the 90s, When the Bitch Came Out. <coughs> Vampire the Masquerade. One of my all-time favorite and least favorite role-playing games of all time. Uh, and we, we're not going to get into why it's that, because that's a whole other topic. But, Vampire the Masquerade celebrated its 25th anniversary, as Aubrey said. And, there was a special panel at Dragon Con that involved a lot of the original creators of the material... Um, editors, etc. I, because of my equal love and hatred of the game, uh, the hatred part was, uh, okay, you can go to that panel, I don't really care about that. But I wound up going. And I am thoroughly happy that I went. I learned some things about this game that I never knew, and I am sort of not going to toot my own horn here, but in our local area, I am sort of myself and maybe three other individuals, sort of the end all be all, we know everything about this game. Because we played it from day one. Yeah. Um, and I loved it. Vampire the Masquerade, as a role playing game itself, changed the world of the way people view vampires even to this day. And Rice had previously twisted the traditional vampire mythos on its head with the, um, the Vampire Chronicles. Interview with the vampire, vampire Lestat, Queen of the Damned, blah, blah, and blah, 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 blah. And so, when this game came out, it, it said that not all vampires are the same. Uh, there are certain clans or families of vampires that share certain abilities, uh, focuses, ideas, beliefs, this, that, and the other. And they all live together in this world of darkness that's just outside of the mortal world. And when the game first came out, it focused mostly on the primary sect of the game, which is the Camarilla, which... During the Inquisition, brief history for those of you who don't know this game, so if you're bored, I don't care. In the days of the Inquisition, prior to that, hold on, flip back, the original vampire, those of you that are Christians and those of you that were raised Christians, maybe you're familiar with the story of Cain and Abel in the Old Testament. And Cain slew his brother Abel, um, and God was, you know, where's, where's, where's your brother? 
You're God, you should know. <laughs> so anyway, God cursed Cain in the Bible. Well, this game takes that story and takes that further and says, yes, God cursed Cain, but he cursed him with the gift, or the punishment, really, of immortality. And, you know, the fact that you have to drink blood. And you have to, con yeah, you have to drink the blood of your fellow beings. Um, and Vampire the Masquerade was born. Uh, different bloodlines or clans came about. Uh, later on, there were certain different sects of vampires that were completely different from the Camarilla, the Ankanu, the Sabbat, um, and so on and so on. There were even independent clans. And the game itself, Tabletop and the LARP, which came later, as Aubrey said, really changed the gaming world because this was not... And there's nothing wrong with Dungeons, Dragons, or any of the fantasy games. But this was not a dungeon crawl. This was not, uh, let's battle the evil demon. And This was political intrigue and seduction and uh, twisting situations to better you. <laughs> um... As someone who was around when this first came out, uh, the guy in school that I went to uh, went to school with, his name was Adam, and he told me about this new RPG, uh, blah, blah, blah. He let me borrow his uh, text, which at the time, in the 90s, was 25 bucks. That's a lot of money in the 90s Yeah. For, for, for a book. And as you can see, I've kept this. Which is second edition. Where's your first edition? The first edition's back there. The first edition is in the... Oh. <laughs> um, but Vampire the Masquerade. This game means so much to me as a game master and a player uh, it, it 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 changed everything I mean it, like Aubrey said it really really changed everything in the gaming world um, now she can tell her story years later. the first few games that I played of this I fell in love with and I'm one of the few people in our area who has played the same tabletop character and LARP now the same character since the game came out. Thanks to very lenient storytelling. No, lenient my ass. Thanks to me working my ass off. Because <laughs> they could have said, and no. <laughs> Your first introduction to VTM. My, this. my first introduction to VTM came a lot later. About ten years later. Um, actually, a little more like twelve. Something like, something like that. Uh, I was coming from Wild Adventures in Valdosta, Georgia for their version of Halloween Horror Nights, and I can't recall what they call it, but I was coming back with my mother and Megan, actually. Is this your first, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but is this your first RPG that you ever played, or is yes. this? Oh, wow. Yeah, that was the first. Um, wow, wow, wow. We were coming back from Valdosta, and we had stopped this little strip mall had this used bookstore and so we went in looking around and I see this book called Laws of the Night <laughs> revised edition and I see it's about vampires so I buy it and um, immediately first, immediately I fell in love with Clan Toriador. Your first introduction was with the LARP so it was yeah. never it was no, never with the no, tabletop. No it wasn't tabletop. Oh wow. It was with LARP. Wow, why did I never know this? I don't know. I always thought that you, and then got into the LARP later. No. Like, I never, wow. No. My first introduction. See people you love and you've been with for years, you learn shit about every was day. was Laws of the Night, revised edition. And the day I bought it, I'm in the car flipping through this book, and I, I'm head over heels obsessed with this thing already, because you can roleplay vampires? 
this is actually a thing that people do. All of these clans seem really cool. Especially this artsy fartsy fucking one. Wow, what the fuck is this shit? And my mind from then on was blown. And it also so happens that same year, um, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, one of the computer games was released. So after getting into the LARP, I was introduced to the computer game. Incidentally. There it is. That's the book she's talking about, although this is my copy. This is the book she's talking about for the LARP. Yeah. Which, story about that <laughs> later. So I fell in love with the LARP. I fell in love with the, the computer game. Um, it wasn't until 2009 when I actually got to play the LARP for the first time. It was at a convention. I want to say it was Megacon. Mm. I, I didn't get past character creation because we had other shit to do and it just took forever. But that was the first time I ever got to play it and I got to play it again at a different convention that next year. It wasn't until 2010 around what New Year's wow. at Tiff and Bo's when we was that when it was? Wow is that the somewhere around the end of 2010 Wow when I went to a friend's house who you know have been playing it just that's as, how we just as long as him and I was introduced to the tabletop game the and first we were time. introduced to each other right around that same time. Yeah we were but I mean this this game has <laughs> been so much to me and our love life yeah we, we owe a lot of thanks to the LARP in particular <laughs> yeah yeah we do um, now gro granted both of us have grown um, I have always identified more with the sect known as the Sabbat um so much so that prior to our marriage, which hopefully will happen soon when we have money, uh, we plan on getting matching uh, wrist tattoos of the Sabbat symbol. Simply because it just means so much to us as a couple and... And the Sabbat's cooler than the Camarilla. And the Sabbat's cooler than the Camarilla. Um, so yeah, th this, this panel that we went to and th that little backstory on, on VTM... Um, but the panel was packed. They didn't expect. Oh the, yeah. The the the. Um, the panelists. The panelists didn't expect it to be as packed as it was. It was almost standing room. And they talked about the early days of the creation of ETM and uh, their contributions to it, and it was so informative. And so interesting that at this point I was already about to pass out from lack of sleep, but I stayed awake through the whole thing, and it 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 just kept my interest. And one of the panelists looked so fucking familiar and sounded so familiar to us that <coughs> I really wish we would have stayed afterwards to go. Where do we know you from? Yeah, because I know. But you for had me, to use the bathroom. Well, yeah. Because I had to piss like a Russian racehorse. <laughs> um, and you know the Russian ones have to piss more than anyone of uh, the yeah, other ones. Yeah, of course. Vladimir Putin. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Anyway. Amazing panel. Yes. Amazing convention. Uh, we could probably ramble on for another two hours, but you're probably already bored of seeing our fat asses and... Um, no shaving, no shaving, no makeup. Uneven bangs. Uh, I, I, uh, anyway, hopefully this will be up soon. Um, we will be, be, especially now with the, the Samhain season beginning for us, uh, Halloween for those of you who don't know what the hell I'm talking about when I say Samhain, but you're cute. I am a spooky, scary skeleton. You are a spooky. Um, Skelly Shackleford. <laughs> um, I don't. I, yeah, I really wish we would have. I wish fate would have put that reservation in the name of Rusty, Rusty Shackleford. Shackleford. Yeah. Um. So anyway, Dragon Con. Hopefully, we will see you there next year. 
Um, Booville TV, we're going to work on maybe, I don't know if they do press passes or whatever. We're going to try to work on maybe doing a Booville TV segment um, at Dragon Con. Maybe by then we'll have like a mobile camera because, you know, we have no budget on this show. None. None. At all. Um, we don't even have a budget for real life shit so. yeah we don't have a budget for real life shit we do this solely because it's a love of all things spooky all things horror all things nerdy um and even all things nerdy with that going in some of the uh reviews that we've got coming up for you uh within the next couple of months and uh and so on might not just be necessarily what you're thinking of as far as horror movies go we're going to go into possibly horror episodes of some of your favorite television shows. What? One of the things I could think of is Star Trek. What? How many horror themed episodes of Star Trek have there been? So many. Friday the 13th, the series we could go into a couple of episodes. Yeah. There's the, the the world of horror is not just Freddy's Hammer. Nightmare. It's <laughs> it's not Freddy's Nightmare. It's not just Amicus. It's not just Hammer. It's not New Line. It's not um, Dimension. It's all things spooky. And that's one of the things that we're going to focus on this year on um, Booville TV is highlighting the spooky in everything. Even if it's your little mundane show that you like on, you know, Thursday nights or whatever it is. You know, we're going to focus on the spooky. We might even take it way back and do like the horror Halloween episode of Dawson's Creek. You don't know what we're liable to do. <laughs> yes, I took it there. I'm sorry. I, I, it, I, it was a good episode. I hated that show, but that was a good episode. Okay. The, did you ever see that one? No. The Halloween episode of Dawson's Creek? I didn't know there was one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming up, we're going to have things like a review of Love at First Bite. We're going to have a review of, if we haven't already done it yet, which I don't think we have, Rob Zombie's Halloween. We're going to have reviews of more of our wonderful Something Weird people. And reviews of branching out into the world of, uh, we talked about it when we first started doing the show, but branching out into the world of uh, spooky fashion and gothic fashion and classic goth versus the new shit versus uh, the Strega shit versus uh, all kinds of other stuff. We might have music reviews. Yes. We'll have reviews of, you know, classic gothic industrial and spooky music, witch house, um... And you uh, EBM, industrial, dark wave, and so on. So, Booville TV is not all just about horror movies. <coughs> Booville TV is truly living the spooky lifestyle. Yes. Yes. If you identify yourself as a gothic person, if you identify yourself as a horror fiend or a horror hound, if you identify yourself as just a dark person in general we'll even discuss things like themes of satanism satanism in movies or satanic movies um reviews of uh satanic li literature or anything dark that you can think of we're going to cover and that's what we're here for that's that's why we're doing this, is for yes. those of you who are like us, that enjoy the macabre, the dark, the scary, the creepy, the spooky, the satanic, the, 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 the of what normies think is, that's scary, that's creepy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anything else you would like to add? Ah. I think I'm pretty good for this episode. I'm pretty good as well. Yes, Dragon Con was fun. The VTM panel was fun. We had fun. We got sick, but we had fun. We had lots of fun that last night. Yes, we did. So, Pazuzu be with you. And also with you. I'm Sean. I'm Aubrey. 
and you have just been watching a really long fucking episode of Booville TV. <laughs> Da, 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 da. We're so scary, sell the death of some whatever.